Hey everyone, Gunsnipe here, and in today's GTA video, I'm gonna go over the 8 special vehicles that came out with the Import Export DLC. That's right, I'm gonna go over each of the 8 special vehicles and their special abilities, as well as the VIP jobs that are associated with them. That way, if you're trying to make money for them, you, can, you would know which ones to buy and which ones to stay away from. If this video was of any help, please drop a like, subscribe, comment, and share it for more videos. With that out of the way, let's get right into the video. Now I'm going through this list based on the prices of each vehicle. So the first of the eight is the MTL Wastelander. It costs $656,350 for the full price and $495,000 for the trade-in price. It seats six passengers with two in the front and four in the back. But other than that, this vehicle really has nothing special for it. Its speed is de decent but because of its high clearance from the road, it suffers, a, it tips over when you try to take a tight turn. It's designed to be a vehicle transporter, but you really can't place another vehicle in the back. It'll just fall off. So the price doesn't warrant the cost for buying this vehicle. Unless Rockstar adds the ability to use it to haul your exported cars to its destination. The VIP job associated with the Wastelander is called Transporter. Once you go to the Wastelander provided by the game, it'll have one of three vehicles in the back. This, either the Space Docker, the Go-Go Monkey Blista Compact, or the Duke of Death. The object is to get from point A to point B, but it won't be easy since the AI will throw two car waves at you to stop you. The payout is based on how long it takes you to complete it similar to contact missions, with a max payout of 25000 at the 3 minute mark. As long as the transported vehicle health doesn't drop all the way down, you will get paid. The next vehicle is the Karen Technical Aqua. It goes for $1,489,600 for the full price and $1,120,000,000 for the trade-in price. It seats 3 passengers with 2 in the cab and 1 on the turret. As its name suggests, this vehicle is an amphibious version of the technical, meaning that it can traverse on both land and, at, and sea. While on land, the, v the technical has a decent cruising speed and average handling. While at sea, its weight plus the tires dragging underwater significantly lower its speed to a crawl. This vehicle can also be brought into LSC so you can fully customize it. Now, I don't have footage for this VIP job, but the VIP job associated with the Technical Aqua is called Amphibious Assault. This job requires two people, and the object is to go to three points on the map and destroy ten, ten caches in each of the three points. You have 15 minutes to complete this mission, and once you do, you'll receive 22000 for the job. The next vehicle is the Nagasaki Blazer Aqua, and it goes for $1,755,600 for the full price and $1,320,000 for the trade-in price. It seats just one, and just like the, the Technical Aqua, the Blazer Aqua can traverse on both land and sea. On land, the speed of the Blazer Aqua is the same with any of the other ATVs, and while on water, the Blazer Aqua has really good speed when the wheels are retracted and it handles like a sea shark. Other than this, the ability to retract and extend the wheels when you hit the right D-pad button, the Blazer Aqua has machine guns built into the vehicle. Just like the Technical Aqua, you can also bring the Blazer Aqua to LSC to fully customize it. The VIP job associated with this vehicle is called Stockpile. You and your associates have just 10 minutes to pick up all 30 packages that are both on land and at sea. The payout is based on how many packages you can actually get. If you and your associates manage to get all the packages, you will get 39000 for this job. The fourth vehicle is the Joe Built Phantom Wedge. This piece of a vehicle goes for $2,553,000 for the full price and $1,920,000 for the trade-in price. It seats up to 5 passengers with 2 in the cab, 2 on the sides of the vehicle, and 1 on the back, one sitting on the back hitch. 
The main feature of the Phantom Wedge is the wedge-shaped nose on the front of the front end of the vehicle. This coupled with the diesel engine makes it a powerful vehicle to move other vehicles out of its way. The wedge-shaped nose also has an added benefit. The change in aerodynamics makes the nose of the Phantom Wedge allows, allowing the truck to go faster than its original counterpart, but lacks handling. Now, unlike the model you use in the special vehicle mission and the VIP jobs, the post-production model has reduced armor limitations, meaning that hitting and moving other vehicles out of, out, out of its way over time will ultimately destroy the Phantom Wedge. The post-production model of the Phantom Wedge also doesn't have any bulletproof tires and cannot be customized at LSC. The VIP job associated with the Phantom Wedge is called Plow. Once you're in the special Phantom Wedge provided for this job, you'll have 15 minutes to get to all three points and destroy the three sacks of crates. Just like with the Waste Under VIP job, this job's payout is based on how long it takes you to complete it. After the three minute mark, this job pays $30,000 for the job. One other job that the post-production Phantom Wedge can do is the VIP job haulage. Since the wedge is still a, an 18 wheeler, it can hook up to the trailer for this job and haul it to its destination. Keep in mind that if you hook up a trailer to the Phantom Wedge, you lose out on that fifth spot for, a, for anyone to get on. And also, if you want to do the job haulage, you will need m multiple people in your lobby. You won't be able to do this job if you're in a lobby by yourself. The advantage with the Phantom Wedge is its speed while doing this mission. It's faster than any of the original 18 wheelers in the game, plus you have the wedge shaped nose to help it move cars out of, this, out of its way. Just keep in mind that the Phantom Wedge, the post production Phantom Wedge, is still susceptible to the 30 car limit hit limit before it starts to catch smoke before it starts smoking and catch on fire and just like the plowed and transport emissions haulage will pay 25,000 when you reach the three minute mark the fifth vehicle is the armored box fill this armored behemoth goes for 2,926,000 for the full price and 2,200,000 for the trade-in price the armored box fill can hold up to five passengers with two in the front two in the back, and one on the gun turret. The appearance of the armored box fill makes it look like it came from a Mad Max movie. Its smaller wedge-shaped nose is still effective at moving vehicles out of its way. It's also faster than the original, original box fills in the game, but handles the same, and the high caliber gun placement on the top makes the vehicle just as powerful offensively as the insurgent pickup. Now unfortunately, the post-production model of the armored box fill has severe armor limitations. Not only does it lack bulletproof tires, but any explosive ordnance can easily destroy this vehicle in a single hit. The VIP job associated with the box fill is called Fortified. Once inside the provided vehicle, you have to survive an onslaught of enemy AI from both the ground and from the air. If you survive the full 10 minutes, you'll receive $35,000 for the job. The best places that will ensure your survival is the service tunnel that's connected to the highway in LS, the underground parking lot next to the service tunnel, and the mountains away from any roads. This will prevent the ground AI from getting trying to get to you as, as, long, as long as, as you in, you're in the gun seat. It, 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 the enemy AI won't come after you while you're in the mountains. The sixth vehicle on our list is the BF Ramp Buggy. This vehicle goes for $3,192,000 for the full price and $2,400,000 for the trade-in price, and can only sit, seat two people. The most noticeable feature of this car is the ramp-shaped front end of the car. It is designed to get under any vehicle minus the tank and any other ramp buggy from the front end and, and ramp it into the air. It has great speed, but suffers in handling due, due in part to the heavy armor it has. The post-production model that we get has some armor limitations. While you can put bulletproof tires on the ramp buggy at any LSC, 
it suffers the same 30 car limit that the post-production Phantom Wedge does. Once it reaches this limit, the car will start smoking and ultimately catch on fire. Now, just like with the other VIP job, I don't have any footage for it. But the VIP job associated with this vehicle is called Ramped Up. This job requires two people to do and you have 20 minutes to collect 15 packages off of rooftops using the ramp buggy and a motorcycle. Completing this job at the 15 minute mark will give you $40,000 for the job. The seventh vehicle is the Coil Rocket Voltic. This supercar goes for $3,830,000 for the full price and $2,880,000 for the trade-in price and seats two people. The most noticeable feature is the large protruding jet engine in the back end of the car. While the speed of the Rocket Voltic is slightly inferior to its original counterpart due to part of the heavy engine in the back, it's briefly nullified by the sudden boost of the engine when pressing L3. The Rocket Voltic does handle relatively the same to the original. You can also take this vehicle to LSC and customize it. Unlike the Rocket Voltic used in the Special Vehicle Mission and VIP job, the Post Rocket Voltic has a slightly larger, longer recharge time on the jet engine between each burst, between 4 to 5 second recharge time on the Special Vehicle and VIP job, and 9 to 10 second recharge time on the Post Production model. The VIP job associated with the Rocket Voltic is called Velocity. It's similar to the vehicle sourcing missions where once you get into the vehicle, you have to keep the vehicle at over a certain speed or else the detonation meter will fill up and the vehicle will explode. If you can survive the full 10 minutes, this job will pay $35,000. The best place to do this job is at the airport on the tarmac. Just make sure you properly hit the, that ramp on the left, so, left side of the main terminal with the speed meter in the green. You can also do, use the Rocket Voltic in time trials and in various free mode events. The eighth and final vehicle on the list is the Impante Ruiner 2000. This muscle car is by far the most expensive land vehicle in the game at $5,745,000 for the full price and $4,320,000 for the trade-in price and seats two passengers. This version of the Ruiner is heavily influenced by the 1980s television show Knight Rider, where the star of the show is a two-door Trans Am muscle car named KIT, acronym for the Knight Industries 2000. This car is faster than its original counterpart and has slightly better handling. The car has several features. It can jump into, the, into several feet into the air, which needs to be recharged after each jump. The car also has an unlimited amount of parachutes for it to glide while in the air. Which if you can take this car to, to the top of Mount Chiliad and, and time its jump just right with the jumping ability, you can literally glide this car all the way from Mount Chiliad to the airport in Los Santos. It has machine guns built into the front of the car and has highly accurate missiles. More accurate then the missiles from the homing launcher and on the attack chopper and fighter jets. The car also has one hidden ability. If you place your vehicle accessibility to no one in the interaction menu and someone tries to get into your Ruiner 2000, the car will actually zap that person, making them unable to get up for a couple of seconds. This was also a security feature in its real life counterpart on the show to prevent Kit from being hijacked. You can also take the Ruiner 2000 into LSC and fully customize it to your liking. Just like the previous mentioned vehicles, the Ruiner 2000 has a limitation. Unlike the version used in the Special Vehicle Mission and VIP jobs, the post-production model is limited to only 8 missiles at any given time. Once, the, once you run out of missiles, the only way to get some more is to drive, back to, drive the car back to your vehicle warehouse. Going to any LSC will not replen replenish your missiles. The VIP job associated with the Ruiner 2000 is called Fully Loaded. Once inside, you have 50, 20 minutes to destroy 10 turreted, turreted vehicles. 
Each vehicle takes two missiles to destroy, but don't worry, the missiles will automatically replenish after all eight missiles are spent. Once you destroy the final vehicle, the job pays $25,000 around the three minute mark. Now, out of the eight special vehicles, my favorite one is the Ruiner 2000. It's got some great features despite its limitation, plus you control people with its security feature. But the most useful one is hands down the Phantom Wedge. Despite its lack of armor and the 30 car hit limit, it's capable of doing not one but two separate VIP jobs, provided that the lobby you're in has multiple people in for the second job. But the most fun vehicle is going to be the Coil Rocket Voltic. I mean, come on. Who doesn't like taking jumps and while in the air you hit that rocket button and you're catapulted further than normal? I sure as hell do. And lastly, in terms of most profitable, meaning the vehicles that can turn a profit with their respective VIP jobs, it's going to be the Ramp Buggy with two people, the Blazer Aqua with multiple people helping out. You can't, you can do that one solo, but it's impossible to get the maximum amount of money within the, within the allotted time. The Rocket Voltic, the Armored Boxville, and the Phantom Wedge. So that's ramped up, stockpiling, velocity, fortified, and plowed that pay out the most money when with the new VIP jobs. But of course, if you don't have multiple people helping you out on ramped up and stockpiling, you can substitute these two with fully loaded and transporter, that's with the Ruiner 2000 and the Wastelander, and these jobs will pay 25000 respectively. Alright, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. One thing I need to mention, the event week going on from now to the 13th of February has some great stuff on discount, like half off of the executive offices and 25% off of the vehicle warehouses. So if you don't have a vehicle warehouse or an, or an office at this point, get those so you can store the special vehicles in the vehicle warehouse since you can't store these in your, in your regular garage. Also, if you're watching this and, you still, and you're still on the PS3 and 360 and are still planning to make the jump to either PS4, Xbox One, or PC, you need to act fast. Because Rockstar stated on their newswire yesterday that when March 6th rolls around, they will be ending character transfers. Meaning that if you haven't transferred your character from last generation to current generation, and you plan on doing so after March 6th, you will be out of luck. Now it's obvious why Rockstar is doing this. They're stopping the flow of modded accounts from entering GTA Online on the PS4, Xbox One, and PC from last generation, since it's on those older consoles that the modded accounts are being made for. I for one think that this is a great idea on two fronts. For one, it will completely stop the flow of modded accounts that have been either been modded with have modded, modded outfits that make your body invisible, showing only your head and have an unfair advantage in a gunfight, and have other unfair advantages like unlimited ammo and no recoil. But this will also force Rockstar to to finally allow players who didn't want to transfer over and started a new character from scratch to be able to buy the returning player vehicles like the Dukes, the Ballista Compact, the Stallion, the Kraken Submersible, and the Dodo Seaplane. I'll leave a link of the newswire in the description down below. But again, thank you so much for watching. Please drop a like, subscribe, comment, and share this video. And I'll see you all in the next one.